ओके ओके हेलो यस मैम यस Yes. Hello everyone. Can I share my screen? Hello. Wait for two minutes, ma'am. Okay. Yeah. No, no. Introduce you first, then you can okay. share your screen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Hello, ma'am. हेलो प्रथमा हेलो यस हेलो 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 यस यू आर ऑडिबल मैम यस मैम धनश्री मैम धनश्री मैम Yes, ma'am. Hello. Ah, hello, ma'am. We will start within one minute. Ah, uh, okay, ma'am. It's already four o'clock. धनेश्वरी मैम प्लीज स्टार्ट ओके Doctor Manoj, please unmute. Mute yourself. Good afternoon, all. Myself, Doctor Dhanushree Mahajan, will be jointly coordinating this webinar with Doctor Dipali Rajput, ma'am. We welcome you all in the sixth webinar of Nima OBGY Bonanza webinar series on behalf of Nima OBGY Central. Today. This topic is cervical cancer. Let's start the session with Dhanvantari Mantra. Evaya Dhanvantre Amruta Kalaya Vinachana Kyanathaya Shri Behalf of Nima Ubijiva Central. I welcome to all the dignitaries and delegates. For today's design and knowledge level session on cervical cancer with Ayurvedic insight, we are we are fortunate enough to have Dr. Pradna Aptikar, ma'am, as a guest speaker. I welcome you, ma'am. I, I welcome all the dignitaries present here. Dr. Vinay Pembulnikar, sir, President of Neva Central. Mm -hmm. Dr. U.S. Pandey, sir, Secretary of Neva Central. 
डॉक्टर आशुतोष कुलकर्णी सर ट्रेजर ऑफ नीमा सेंट्रल देन सुबह का वो सी एस हो गया ऐसा बोल रहे थे पार्टिसिपेंट्स प्लीज म्यूट यूर सेल्फ डायलिटेशन डॉक्टर शीला मेन मैम की देखते होंगे अच्छे से क्योंकि वो लोग सिस्टर लोग आए थे करने तो मैंने पूछा उन लोगों को कौन है तो सिस्टर के भी सबसे हेड है डॉक्टर शीला वो आके पीवी कर प्लीज म्यूट यूर सेल्फ पहले उसने किया फिर दूसरे सिस्टर ने मैं भी करो करके किया तो स्टूडेंट ने पूछा कितना है तो बोले सिक्स सेवन फिंगर है इतना है फाइव सिक्स एक फाइव सिक्स बोल रही थी एक सिक्स सेवन बोल रही थी डॉक्टर यू कैन म्यूट हर सेल्फ फ्रॉम योर एंड है तो बोले फाइव सिक्स है फाइव सिक्स फिंगर है तो मतलब हाँ इफेसमेंट नहीं देखे जस्ट डायलिटेशन देखे है तो बोले हाँ डायलिटेशन ही देखते है हम लोग बाकी कुछ नहीं देखते ऐसा तो हम तो मतलब इफेसमेंट डायलिटेशन स्टेशन कितना है वो सब देखते है ना तो मैम म्यूट कर दीजिए उन्हें यस यस मैम यस मैम यस यस हाँ पता हाँ, नहीं वो ऐसे देन डॉक्टर कामिनी धीमान मैम प्रेसिडेंट ऑफ नीमा ओबीजुआ सेंट्रल डॉक्टर प्रियंका नकारे मैम सेक्रेटरी ऑफ नीमा ओबीजुआ सेंट्रल डॉक्टर विष्णु बाउने सर ट्रेजर ऑफ नीमा ओबीजुआ सेंट्रल डॉक्टर राजेश उताने सर नेशनल कोऑर्डिनेटर नीमा ओबीजुआ सेंट्रल I would like to welcome Dr. Suhas Herlikar Sir, President of Nima Obijiwa, Maharashtra. Dr. Manoj Gaikwad Sir, Secretary of Nima. Let's. Overlook on objectives of NIMA will foster education in the subject of integrally welfare and allied topics with integrated approach of Indian medicine with modern science to encourage as well as promote and participate in the study and research in the field of integrated obstetrics, gynecology, human reproduction, maternal and child health, and contraception control and allied subjects to organize or participate and cooperate with the field. camps clinics hospitals and other health arranged dialogue discussion meetings and correspondence between our association and other bodies agencies governmental and non governmental before going further a kind request to all participants to please keep your mobile phone muted during session if your mic is found unmuted or disturbing with speaker's voice you will be either kept in waiting room or removed from the session to maintain decorum of the program and to avoid disrespect of speaker if you have any query put it in the chat box or raise your hand to get certificate please fill up the feedback form link is given in the chat box atulam tatra tatteja sarva देव शरीरजम एकस्तम तद्भुन्नारी व्याप्त लोकत्रयम त्विशाह द इनकंपेरेबल रेडियंस दैट वाज बोर्न फ्रॉम ऑली गॉड्स एंड परवेडेड द थ्री वर्ड्स कम टू वन प्लेस एंड टुक द फॉर्म ऑफ वुमन सच अ इंपॉर्टेंस इज गिवन टू द वुमन आयुर्वेदा इज ऑलवेज टेकिंग केयर ऑफ हेल्थ ऑफ वुमन एट Name it to the women's health. Out of no uh, cancer death among women worldwide, primary pre prevention and screening are by far most effective modalities for decreasing the healthcare burden and mortality attributed to cervical cancer. If detected early, cervical cancer is one of the most successfully treatable form of cancer. So, in today's lecture, Dr. Pradhan Aptikar, ma'am, will enlighten on I. Touch with ma'am to please introduce our over to you, Dipali ma'am. Thank you, Dr. Dhanashri. Good afternoon, ma'am. Hello. Hello. Yes, ma'am. You, you are audible. Yes, yes, ma'am. Yes, Good afternoon, everyone. It's my great pleasure to introduce our today's speaker, Dr. Pratne Aptigar, ma'am. who is practicing as an ayurvedic gynecologist in thane since last 21 years 
Ma'am is a gold medalist, completed her graduation and post-graduation from Kriya Mahavidyalaya Pune. She has also done her MA Sanskrit and numerous certificate courses, <coughs> laparoscopy, colposcopy, IVF, and she is currently pursuing her PhD. Ma'am is president of Ayurved Vyaspit Thane branch since 2015 and received various awards such as Vaidya Khadivale Trust, Vaidya Lakshmi Bai Borwankar Sri Vaidya Puraskar in 2015. Puraskar by Rashtriya Shikshan Mandal in 2021. Ma'am has published various papers in national and international journals and also was an editor of the book PCOD published by Ayurved Vyaspit. She has recently won the Best Paper Award for her hey, case. Hey, 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 hey. Seema, ma'am, please mute yourself. Gandali Aspekar, please mute yourself. Ma'am has recently won the Best Paper Award, a case report on baby with congenital hypothyroidism treated with Ayurvedic medicines in November 2022. Infertility, endometriosis, endocrine disorders are ma'am's area of interest. Today, she is going to share her insight on cervical cancer, the second most common cancer in females in India. Hence, now we welcome our today's speaker, Dr. Pradne Aptikar, ma'am. Ma'am, uh, thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Deepali, for introducing me. Uh, you, first of all, uh, I am thankful to Dr. Priyanka, Madam, Dr. Premraj Khairnar for introducing me in Niba OBGY Central uh, platform. And uh, thank you, Dr. Dhanashri. Uh, so uh, let us start with the can uh, cervical cancer. Uh, in my lecture, I would like to uh, recap about the cervical cancer in the modern way also. And after that, I will come to the Ayurvedic insights. So uh, just uh, give me one sec. I will share my screen first. Is it visible? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. So I will. Correct. So I will uh, um, shut my video to get proper uh, okay uh, lecture. Yeah. Okay, so let us start with the cervical cancer. Uh, as everyone know, as uh, cancer can occur in any part of the female reproductive system, the vulva, vagina, cervix, uterus, fallopian tubes, or ovaries. These cancers are called as gynecological cancers. It is the fifth most common cancer in humans and the second most common cancer in women worldwide. And the most common cancer cause of death in developing countries. Sexually transmitted human papilloma virus, that is the HPV infection, is the most important risk factor for cervical intraepithelial neoplasia and the invasive, uh, invasive cervical cancer. So normally, a uh, patient comes to Ayurved in very later stage as a final hope. Patient comes to us as an adjuvant treatment to chemotherapy or radiotherapy. And patient comes with all the reports like biopsy, histopathology, CT scan, MRI, etc. Hence, we might become prejudiced with modern diagnosis and also with the prognosis. It is very important to examine the patient from Ayurvedic perspective for the diagnosis and the prognosis also. Still, we must have adequate knowledge about the cancer and its stages. Sometimes patient comes to us for other symptoms and the symptoms could turn out to be cancerous. Hence, first, we will look forward to the modern diagnosis and other details about the cervical cancer. So, um, cervical carcinoma continues to occupy the leading uh, position among the neoplastic diseases of the reproductive organs in women. Cervical cancer is often diagnosed between the ages of 35 and 44. Hence, pap smear screening test is mandatory after 40 years of age in many countries like USA. 
incident <laughs> rates for the disease dropped by more than 50% between 1975 and 2015 due to part uh, to an increase in screening which can find cervical changes before they turn cancerous here ayurveda plays pivotal role in prevention of cervical cancer that we will be discussing uh, this in detail cervical cancers are diagnosed in women over age 65 it is rare for women younger than 20 to develop cervical cancer so it is the fourth most frequent cancer in women estimated 570000 new cases in 2018 representing 6.6% of all female cancers approximately 90% of deaths from cervical cancer occurred in low and middle income countries the high mortality rate from cervical cancer globally could be reduced through a comprehensive approach that includes prevention early diagnosis effective screening and the treatment programs please ask someone to yeah thank you so it is the indian scenario of hpv infection uh, so there are currently several cervical cancer research programs in india the national cancer registry program established by icmr that is indian council of medical research acts as a surveillance system for cervical cancer or any cancer in india it collects the data uh, in an active manner visiting government and private sector hospitals specialized cancer hospitals and pathology laboratories to get information on the types and magnitude of cancer so it is the uh, uh, reference i have given so normally uh, india has a population of approximately 365.70 million women above 15 years of age who are at risk of developing cervical cancer then uh, the current estimate indicate approximately 132000 new cases diagnosed and 74000 deaths annually in india now you can understand how the uh, severity of this cervical cancer is accounting nearly one third of the global cervical cancer deaths that occurs in india only so indian women face 2.5% cumulative lifetime risk and 1.4% cumulative death risk from cervical cancer so at any given time about 6.6% of women in general population are estimated to harbor cervical hpv infection uh, of serotype 16 and 18 account for nearly 76.7% of cervical cancer in india so uh, these are the uh, stages normal cn1 cn2 cn3 or the adeno carcinoma in c2 and then the invasive cancer so this is the uh, progression of cn2 cancer so cn1 includes mild dysplasia condyloma or anogenital warts cn2 includes moderate dysplasia cn up to cn2 these are pre cancerous stages and cn3 includes severe dysplasia and carcinoma in c2 so current investigation indicate the fundamental importance of initiation of carcinogenesis within the cervix is hpv infection out of more than 100 antigen differentiated hpv types approximately 30 are characterized by an affinity for epithelium of lower female genital look there are 30 out of 100 so uh, now we are looking in uh, detail for the stages of cervical cancer as you already know but i know there are many pg students also th those who are uh, watching this so i am goes in detail little bit we will uh, have a rapid uh, reading or rapid uh, uh, covering of this the of this uh, topic so in stage 1 this is the spread from the cervix lining into the deeper tissue only but it is still just found in the uterus it has not spread to other parts of the body then there are stages first a first a1 a2 then b b1 b2 b3 
so in a1 the cancerous area is less than 3 mm now listen this carefully so 3 mm in depth so depth is important in a2 the area is 3 mm to uh, less than 5 mm in depth first b it is more is larger but it is still confined to the uh, cervix only no distant spread <laughs> IB1 tumor is 5 mm or more, but less than 2 centimeters. Okay, IB2 is 2 centimeter, but less than 4 centimeter wide. IB3 it is 4 centimeter or more in wide width. So you can say the first stage is up to 3 millimeters to 4 centimeters, which includes A and B. So in stage 2. It has spread beyond the uterus to nearby areas such as the vagina or tissue near the cervix, but it is still inside the pelvic area. So here also we have the classification that is second A1, second A2 and second B. Second A1, again, the tumor is limited to the upper two-third of vagina and not spread to the tissue next to the cervix, which is called as the parametrial area. Second A1 is the tumor is less than 4 centimeter. Second A2 is tumor is 4 centimeter or more in width. Then third, the tumor involves the lower third of vagina and are, has spread to the pelvic wall and regional lymph nodes. So stage 2B, so stage, uh, stage 3, A involves Lower third of vagina, but not grown to the pelvic wall. Third B is pelvic wall and also affects may affect kidney. Third C, that is C3, that is third C, tumor involves regional lymph nodes also. Then stage 4. Hello. Please unmute. Uh, in stress C1 and C2 and C3, in C2, the cancer has spread to paraortic lymph nodes. The lymph nodes are found in the abdomen near the base of spine, near aorta, major artery that runs from the heart to abdomen. Then it is 4, 4A four and 4B. Four, 4 is the cancer has spread to the bladder or rectum but it is not spread other parts of the body and the 4b is the that is the metastasis spread to the other parts of the body also so these are the risk factors you are considering all the risk factors we can say but hpv is the necessary cause of the cervical cancer but it is not only the sufficient cause, other cofactors are also necessary for the progression from cervical HPV infection to cancer. Okay, the first trigger factor is HPV infection, but for the progression of cancer, other risk factors or the cofactors are necessary, such as long term use of hormonal contraceptives, high parity, early initiation of sexual activity, multiple sex, uh, sex partners. Then the tobacco smoking and co-infection with HIV have been identified or the established uh, cofactors. Then another factor is cofactor uh, like co-infection with chlamydia, trachomonitis, then herpes simplex virus type 2, immunosuppression, low socioeconomic status, poor hygiene, low diet in uh, diet low in antioxidants are the probable cofactors. Genetic and immunological host factors and viral factors such as variants of type, viral load, viral integration are likely to be more important. So in short, the first trigger factor is HPV, then many sexual partners or becoming sexually active early, certain genetic factors, long-term mental stress, several pregnancies, giving birth at very young age, smoking and weakened immune system are the major causes of cervical cancer. So you can see here human papilloma virus capable of infecting humans. Then 
it can lead to cancers of cervix vulva vagina penis oropharynx and anus the transmission is obviously sexual contacts the clinical diagnosis of hpv is based upon the appearance of warts on the external genitalia which are usually due to low oncogenic potential virus warty lesions on cervix and upper vagina usually indicate infection with high oncogenic virus cytology pap smear colposcopy and histology that is the biopsy are the important tools to diagnose hpv infection and the cancer stage molecular biology is reliable but expensive test hpv dna detection can also be done by pcr genital swabs and cervical biopsies can be tested here uh, you can see the important factors about the, or the important characteristics qualities of the hpv they are small non enveloped dna viruses they are classified according to the dna sequencing using l1 open reading frame of genome over 100 serotypes of hpv have been diagnosed of which 15 to 20 are oncogenic and the lag period between the oncogenic hpv infection or you can say the incubation period also of hpv infection to the invasive cancer it will take 15 to 20 years worldwide high risk type of hpv 16 and 18 contribute over 70% of cervical cancer cases and the most prevalent being hpv 16 at least 50 to 60% and hpv 18 in at least 10 to 12% similarly in indian women the most common prevalent genotypes are hpv 16 and hpv 18 non oncogenic hpv serotype 6 and 11 contribute over 90% of benign genital infections such as genital warts oncogenic hpv serotypes have also been implicated in the causation of anal vulvar vaginal penile and oropharyngeal cancers so again come back to the ci and to the cancer cervix here you can see the transient infection and you can see the cytology also the first two uh, slides the first two pictures of cervix are transient infection hpv please unmute sir aisa karo iski baki wali to band kar do sugar wali chalne do organizers please uh, unmute everyone from your end so this you can see the transient infection uh, first two pictures here normal. hpv can be treated and again come to the normal cervix can be normal and the persistent hpv you can see the dirty picture or the ugly uh, picture of the cervix that can converted into the ca cervix this is the persistent hpv infection so progression of ca and to the cancer cervix here hpv is uh, normally hpv infection is common and about 10% of all women have have it so i mean some time in their uh, uh, reproductive life hpv infection is not a disease body immunity can overcome it almost 70% of the hpv infection regress and become normal over a period of 6 months to 1 year however if the lesion persists or progresses or recurs it needs further treatment so it is the normal cervix infection hpv infected cervix if treated or immunity uh, overcomes it then it go, uh, goes in regression and the cervix becomes normal or otherwise if it get uh, get in progression it can lead to pre cancer and then the invasive cancer so here uh, prevention of cervical cancer by modern science is the cervical cancer vaccine hpv type 16 and 18 involves not only the uterus cervix but also the vagina and vulva so uh, it is a i am here the picture of gardasil which is quadrivalent so it is uh, protects against the hpv of four types <laughs> 16 18 and 11 and the cervix is bivalent 
both are preventive active so it, it is clear they do not treat the hpv infection or the cervical cancer once you have become the hpv infected patient or the cervical cancer there is no use of cervical uh, cancer vaccine so both are preventive vaccine then the prevention of cervical cancer is by either by vaccine or early hpv detection pap smear screening colposcopy in positive pap smear patients and cervical biopsy in positive colposcopy patients so now uh, recently uh, uh, india's first cervical cancer vaccine is uh, now launched it is the cervivac now it is low cost alternative vaccine otherwise the gardasil uh, is too costly it cost about 3000 or 4000 per shot and it requires three shots so now uh, india has launched the low cost alternative vaccine so girls between 9 to 14 years of age likely to be administered the vaccine under the national immunization program in next few months so i think everyone is here gynecologist so everyone know about the pap smear so just the rapid uh, revision again so it's a pap smear uh, is done as a part of gynecological examination uh, it is the examination uh, pap smear the smear is examined under the microscope of scale scrap from the tip of the cervix and the cervix is uh, so early detection of precancerous cells allows intervention that may well prevent the woman in uh, develop, uh, developing cancer it can detect cancerous or precancerous condition of the cervix most invasive cancers of the cervix can be detected early if women have pap test and the pelvic examinations then the indication of pap smear your age is more than 40 years multiple sexual partners history of cervical cancer in close relation especially in maternal in, uh, relation mother or uh, uh, grandmother post menopausal bleeding bleeding after coitus persistent leukorrhea after subtotal hysterectomy now subtotal hysterectomy is uh, nobody is uh, doing but we can have the uh, Uh, i think 80 years or 70 years of patients who are having the history of subtotal hysterectomy so do uh, pelvic examinations of such patients who are having the history of subtotal hysterectomy then the chronic pid uh, etc so this is the how the pap smear is test perform everyone is aware of this so now come to the main slide that is the pap smear results that is the normal results there is no abnormal cells present then the abnormal results are ascus or the agus that is the uh, 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 or the low grade dysplasia hsil that is a high grade dysplasia this means the pre cancer changes are likely to be present or the risk of cancer is greater if the result is hsil or the carcinoma that is the carcinoma in situ uh that means the abnormal changes are likely to progress to cancer then a typical squamous cell is a uh, sch that is the abnormal changes have been found and maybe hsil that is the high grade squamous intraepithelial lesion hsil low grade that is lsil then the atypical glandular cells that is the cell changes are seen such as pre cancer of the upper part of cervical canal that is the inside the uterus so uh, uh in the endo cervical canal there is a transformation zone uh, in this region the squamo epithelial metaplasia occurs this process consists of differentiation and maturation undifferentiated reserve cells into squamous or glandular epithelium infecting these immature cell which are highly susceptible highly vulnerable to various Uh, external internal agents like hpv virus this virus hpv virus disturbs the process of their maturation and differentiation this is the main pathology of uh, cervical cancer so these cells are scrapped during the pap smear and we can get an idea about the cytology the pathology can uh, pathologist can observe these abnormal cells and here 
Ayurveda again has his potential um, in treating ascus, LSIL, HSIL, HSIL, then ASCH, AGC, and CN1 and CN2. Ayurvedic treatment can reverse the abnormal cellular pathology to the normal. But once the carcinoma in C2 progresses, we, as Ayurvedic uh, uh, doctor, we have less, uh, uh, less potential. But in uh, up to CN2, we have high potential to treat the patient. Then the liquid-based cytology nowadays we are doing. Uh, that is the thin layer cytology also commonly referred as liquid based cytology LBC is a technique that employs uh, a special liquid preservative which immediately maintains the quantity of cells obtained for the cytological analysis. You can see here uh, the LBC versus the conventional pap smear. Mm. In uh, LBC, we have directly cells and in pap smear, we may have some other debris also. So we may uh, underdiagnose the patient also. So here one, I am giving one reference of paper in oncology reports, uh, a comparison of liquid-based cytology and the pap smear as a screening method for the cervical cancer. So here is the, you can observe the one graph also. So here you can see the, uh, the results from the second ordinary pap smear from 137 enrolled woman showed the atypical squamous cells of undetermined significance, that is the ASCUS, in 11%, only 11 cases, that is the 8%, and the low grade squamous intraepithelial lesions, that is LSIL, in 40%, 40 cases, that is the 29%. More advanced lesion uh, and a more advanced lesion, that is the HSIL. So with the parallel liquid-based material, ASCUS reported significantly less. So what do you mean? What is meaning? Uh, what do you mean by that? The ASCUS means we are not getting any idea. It's only the atypical cells. So with LBC, we get the differentiator or the specificity about our diagnosis. That is how much it is LSIL and how much it is HSIL. So our diagnosis become more effective with the liquid-based cytology. Then the cases of CIN2 plus found from the liquid-based material were considerably more often diagnosed as HSI. So we get specific or the uh, perfect diagnosis with the liquid-based cytology over the pap smear. So just how the, um, those who are with the more with the pap smear or the LBC and the pathology uh, ground background just the it is the spot diagnosis or the spot rapid fire questions it is a normal pap smear you can just see the healthy cells and uh, see the nucleus and the cytoplasm the size of nucleus so it is the normal pap smear here you can say uh, see the cervical cells uh, under the microscope. Again, the normal cell, dysplastic cells and the cancer cells, you can see. Here you can see the dysplasia is the another way to describe the abnormal cell changes in the cervix. It means that the cells are different from the normal cells in size, then shape and the organization within the tissue. Dysplasia al almost always refers to the precancerous condition. So normal cells, you can see again here the nucleus, size of nucleus, dysplasia, CIN1, CIN2, CIN3. You can three the, uh, see the three sections in dysplasia. See, observe the nucleus and the, in the, observe the nucleus and the size and shape of the cells in the cancer under the microscope. So... types of dysplasia. Here, based how much abnormal cells look like normal cells. Okay. This is the main sentence. Based on how much the abnormal cells look like normal cells. Mild dysplasia means cells look slightly different from the normal cells. Moderate dysplasia means the cells look quite different from the normal cells. 
and severe dysplasia means the cells look very different. That is the totally differential shell. That is the ill differentiated. We can see the pathology report. Ill differentiated. We cannot differentiate the normal cells and abnormal cells. That is the severe dysplasia. Again, you can see the squamous cell carcinoma of the cervix. This is the pap smear of the squamous cell carcinoma of the cervix. Then this is CIN pap smear. Out of that, in CIN1, that is LSIL, low grade squamous intraepithelial lesion. Then HSIL again uh, differentiated into CIN2 and CIN3. Then, as I said earlier, when the positive PAP is there, it is the indication for the colposcopy. So what are the indication of colposcopy? That is the abnormal PAPS results, positive, positive HPV test, abnormal findings in pelvic examination, and when we need the biopsies, it should be colposcopy guided biopsy. We will uh, see in detail in later. So what do you mean by colposcopy? That is the diagnostic procedure that allows to check your cervix, the cell, the wall or the vaginal wall for the abnormal tissue. During the procedure, a special lighted microscope called as the colposcope. It magnifies the tissue that lines your cervix and vagina and if needed, biopsy can be taken from an abnormal lesion for perfect diagnosis. So here you can see a biopsy removes tissues or cells from the body so that with the help of colposcopy, what uh, these are the uh, tests or uh, methods we can do. That is the one is pap smear, the HPV testing, punch biopsy, endocervical curettage, cone biopsy, and the leap method. So a biopsy removes tissues or cells from the body so they can be examined under microscope to check for cancer. A biopsy can be done during colposcopy. Uh, endocervical curettage is a type of biopsy again. It uses a special tool called curate to remove cells from the endocervical canal. It can be used to collect cells though so that they can be examined under microscope to check the cancer. Then cryosurgery uses extreme cold, usually liquid nitrogen or carbon dioxide to freeze and destroy the abnormal cells or tissues. This is the uh, cryosurgery is the treatment modality and the laser surgery is also a treatment modality. Uh, so, with the high intensity beam of light of laser, they remove the abnormal tissues. Then a cone biopsy, which removes cone-shaped piece of tissue from the cervix. It can be done using a surgical scalpel, loop electrosurgical excision procedure, that is LEAP, L-E-E-P, loop electrosurgical excision method or the procedure or the laser surgery. Then the doctors, uh, we have to send this removed tissue to the lab or examine under microscope. And the LEAP is a type of cone biopsy only. It uses thin wire heated by electrical current to remove tissue from the cervix. Then the, again, it is the important part of our uh, lecture right now. The squamous epithelium and the columnar epithelium meet at a line called as the squamocolumnar junction, that is the SCJ. The, what is the importance of SCJ? is uh, the SCJ is visible as the junction between the pink squamous epithelium and the red columnar epithelium after the cervix is cleaned with the normal saline. Look at the first picture. Then SCJ is much better visualized after the application of acetic acid as a distinct white line. So look at the second picture. Then the junction between the brown squamous epithelium and the red columnar epithelium is also quite evident after the application of Lugol's iodine. Look at the third picture. So colcospopis must try to trace the SCJ along the, its entire course. The SCJ is easily identified if it is at the external loss or 
on the ecto cervix so watch the fourth picture the cervix must be manipulated with the endo cervical speculum this is a different speculum rather than our the normal speculum to visualize the scj that extends inside the endo cervix failure to correctly identify the scj is the most common error in colposcopy okay to identify the scj correctly the columnar epithelium should be traced to its lower lowest extent rather than trying to locate the highest appearance extent of the squamous epithelium so observe the fourth and fifth, fifth picture the the fifth is the at the just outside that is at the external os and the scj on the ecto cervix it is deep inside the endo cervical canal so again the it is a most important part of the cervical cancer again it is the squamous metaplasia of the cervix look at the cyto uh, cytology and the cervix on per speculum examination the yellow arrow represents the squamous metaplasia of the cervix so what do you mean by again metaplasia so we will have some information about the metaplasia so actually at the birth there is an abrupt junction between the squamous epithelium of ecto cervix that is the original squamous epithelium and the columnar epithelium at the of the endo cervix at puberty this scj lies at the external os through exposure to estrogen at birth during puberty and throughout the reproductive life there is exposure to the estrogen the female genital organs including cervix grow in size and as a result the endo cervical canal gets inverted exposing columnar epithelium to the vagina and it is called as the ectopy and sometimes this column uh, if you remember uh, if this squamous epithelium is get replaced by the columnar epithelium it is called as the cervical erosion then so this inversion exposes the columnar epithelium of the endo cervix to the acidic vaginal ph this acidity along with the other factors stimulates the replacement of columnar epithelium with squamous epithelium this process is called as the metaplasia i will repeat this i will repeat this sentence the vaginal acidity along with the other factors stimulates the replacement of columnar epithelium with squamous epithelium this process is called as the metaplasia in erosion the process is actually opposite the squamous epithelium the normal squamous epithelium is get replaced by the columnar epithelium and but it's squamous metaplasia the squamous epithelium the columnar epithelium is get replaced by the squamous epithelium okay so look at the picture the yellow line is the original scj now no more visible the blue line is the new scj and yellow arrows that is the direction of metaplastic changes it is going inward okay so after this process is completed you can see the second picture that is the mature cervix after completion of metaplastic processes the blue line new scj and the yellow line probably the original scj but it is no longer visible now so metaplasia results in uh, the formation of new squamo columnar junction the area between the original scj and the new scj is known as the transformation zone now listen carefully so this is called as the the area between uh, this is the transformation zone this is the transformation zone okay the metaplastic changes usually start from the periphery of the ectropion and sp spread towards the external os changes can also occur in discrete patches on the columnar epithelium the new squamous cells originate from the totipotent reserve cells that remain dormant beneath the columnar cells the process of metaplasia starts with the fusion of tips of villi followed by the covering of columnar epithelium by the thin 
transparent immature epithelium. The immature epithelium matures with gradual proliferation and the differentiation of the squamous cells. The mature squamous epithelium formed because of metaplasia is sometimes indistinguishable from the original squamous epithelium. That is the second slide. So now we cannot distinguish the original and the new SCZ. That is the squamocolumnar junction. So again, this is the this transformation zone is the most crucial zone of the cervix human papilloma virus that is the hpv infection may induce the malignant transformation of cells over this area as a result cervical neoplasms begin in this transformation zone only adequate evaluation of the zone is essential to identify the neoplastic lesions Delineation of the transformation zone is also important to treat the precancerous lesions. The active transformation zone is where the process of metaplasia is continuing or under progress or where the cervical intraepithelial neoplasia has developed. So this is the ongoing process. So in ongoing process, the HPV infection can affect this process. The transformation zone may have uh, of the features of metaplasia, like crypts openings, then the nebothensis, that is the chronic erosion or the uh, uh, islands of columnar epithelium, fine mosaic uh, or the punctations, these are the mosaic patterns, or the punctations or the acetovite uh, epithelium. Hence, pap smear or cervical biopsy should be taken from this transformation zone. Hence, it is necessary to identify the new HCZ and the original HCZ and the transformation zone. So normally we are taking the pap smear in camps or anywhere else, like just we have just we uh, uh, insert the cannula or the spatula or the brush and we just take the pap smear. That's why most of the times pap smear comes just inflammatory or negative. So we actually, we cannot identify the uh, high risk patients in pap smear because of we are not identifying the SCZ or the transformation zones. So cervical carcinoma develops mainly within the transformation zone that is in the region where the squamoepithelial metaplasia occurs. So, here you can see the SIL is low and high. So, again, I am repeating this, I think, for third time because it is the main important uh, points of the cervical cancer. LSIL, that is CIN1 and mild dysplasia. HSIL, that is the high-grade squamous intraepithelial lesion, CIN2, CIN3. In CIN2, we have moderate and severe, and AIS, that is the CIN3. So in Ayurveda, we have the potential up to CIN2 in the prevention background. Again, I repeat, CIN1 is the least severe compares to mild dysplasia. CIN2 is moderately severe compares to Moderate dysplasia. The yes, IN3 is more severe. It describes most both severe dysplasia and carcinoma in C2, a very early stage of cancer in which tumor cells have not yet invaded the surrounding tissues. So CIN graded. CIN is the gradation system on a scale of one to three how abnormal cervical tissue looks under the microscope. So again, in details, cellular changes associated with HPV infection, such as coilocytes, are also commonly seen in CIN. CIN1, the least risky type, represents only mild dysplasia, abnormal cell growth, confined to basal one-third of the epithelium, corresponds to the infection with HPV, 
typically will be cleared by immune response in a year or so though can take severe uh, several years to clear so we have potential in cyan1 cyan2 moderate dysplasia confined to basal two third of the epithelium and cyan3 more than two third of the epithelium may involve the full thickness and this condition may be referred as cervical carcinoma in situ so in these are the interpretation interpretation in cancer dysplasia mild dysplasia moderate dysplasia severe dysplasia carcinoma in situ dysplasia is precancerous region region uh, precancerous lesion which includes cyan1 cyan2 cyan3 and after that mild moderate severe and carcinoma in situ invasive cancer and adenocarcinoma so again dysplasia i think i think uh, i am repeating the uh, some uh, slides but uh, for the uh, uh, confirmation of the stages it is important i think everyone is uh, now uh, having the clear idea about the dysplasia metaplasia and cyan1 cyan2 cyan3 and cervical cancer in c2 so this is the advanced cervical cancer in this stage all cervical ligaments macken rods uterosacral ligaments are get invaded with the cervical tissue hence other pelvic organs sacrum the hip bone the lower vertebral column have metastatic changes in them hence most of them this condition is referred as frozen pelvis where that is the fourth a fourth b all pelvic organs stick together this is inoperable condition in this situation ayurveda also offer only the palliative treatment so again these are the this is the types of hysterectomy uh, so in uh, up to third a stage the radical hysterectomy can be done or the total hysterectomy also can be done but in um, uh, but in uh, total hysterectomy or the in grade 3a 3b the radical hysterectomy or the vardhan hysterectomy is done total hysterectomy with removal of pelvic lymph nodes dissection of obturator fossa paracervical tissue and upper one third of vagina is removed i am not talking about the surgical methods right now because my subject is with the ayurvedic insights okay so um, just to have idea about whether to stop and whether to uh, refer or whether to do the sur uh, surgical uh, intervention i am uh, 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 i am elaborating these slides then uh, this is the lymphatic spread in advanced ca cancer uh, cancer cervix in such cases that orgos uh, surgeon removes all the metastatic lymph nodes by deep dissection so you can see here the distant metastasis is also 27% the sacrum the paracervical the obturator the inguinal so this is the lymphatic spread in the advanced ca cervix so now coming to the philosophy of cancer that is how does the cancer form so cancer is a disease where the cells uh, divide uncontrollably uncontroll and spread into surrounding tissues so uh, these are the normal cells and the cancer cells now let us see the samanya sampraapti of the cancer so cancer is caused by the changes in the dna we can think here the vikruti of shukradhara kala and dhatvantargat shukra here human system cells can detect and attack the cancer cells here we can think of dhatu saratva and vedik shamatva of the patient for example the patient is uh, having rakta saratva and then patient can have more chances uh, of cure in blood related cancers mans uh, mouse sar patient will fight more and have more chances of getting cure in mouse related cancers like cervical cancer so in uh, patients of cervical cancer if we want to have more uh, pro good prognosis the patient should be uh, mouse sar in mouse sar patient we get uh, good prognosis 
in shukrasara patient we will have better results who are having the ovarian or the breast cancers rakta and medosara patients will have better results in serial related cancers like endometrial cancers so from uh, uh, the saratva point of view in the treatment of cancer patient it is essential to examine the prakruti and dhatu saratva as well to have an idea about the prognosis that is the sadhya sadhatva if you know the sadhya sadhatva from ayurvedic point of view and not from the stages explained in the modern science we can treat the patient better we can give better quality of life to the patient because the radiotherapy and the chemotherapy will hamper the quality of life of the patient so if we know the prakruti and saratva of the patient we can offer the at least better quality of life genetic changes can be inherited that is the sahaja vikruti or arise from the certain environmental exposures of lifestyle disorders or stress all these can be correlated with ahar vihar and manasa and kala vikruti hence to treat the patient we should have proper life history uh, lifestyle history of the patient and um, uh, so that we can establish proper pathophysiology that is the samprapti here we can differentiate the hetu in nija and agantuja so viruses that is the hpv virus here and other viruses chemicals we can treat uh, the these factors as agantuja and this nija and agantuja uh, hetu create the sthana vaigunya in the cervix that is the cervical sthana vaigunya then uh, what is metastasis here the cancer cells can break away from the primary tumor and travel through the blood uh, or the lymph to the distant locations in the body that is the vimarga gamana and form new tumors wherever they get sthana vaigunya means the organ is where, where the organ is weak the metastasis is there so some in the some school of thought uh, or some other vaidyas uh, think that the abhyantar visarpagati here we have to think about the abhyantar visarpagati to have an idea about the metastasis hence history of previous major illnesses or the accidents or the major surgery is needed to think of sthana vaigunya hence ayurveda can arrange the speed of getting metastasis further considering the dhatu uh, dhatu sruto drushti ayurved can give treatment to improve dhatu parampara hence role of shodhan chikitsa if rugna bala is good followed by the rasayan chikitsa become significant in the treatment of cancer this is the samanya chikitsa this yes, we can this can do in all types of cancers as we have limited time it is very difficult to elaborate each type of cancer in detail hence i have explained samanya samprapti and samanya chikitsa so here the role of ayurveda in management of women cancer we can offer as a preventive measure as a curative non surgical treatment in pre cancerous stages like vin cin etc here is cin as an adjuvant therapy or to radiotherapy or chemotherapy to reduce side effects in second and third stage of cancer as a palliative therapy pain management in the last stage of cancer and as an abhunarva chikitsa to avoid metastasis or relapse in surgically cured cancers role of ayurveda here as a preventive measure in cervical cancer to avoid cervical cancer we offer rajasvala paricharya sutika paricharya even after induced mtp spontaneous abortion or lscs or normal delivery regular vaginal hygiene hygiene after coitus shodhan chikitsa for systemic detoxification and purification followed by rasayan chikitsa it is necessary to follow rajasvala paricharya sutika paricharya and regular vaginal hygiene to stay away from the hpv infections during menstruation and postpartum period the vaginal ph is very much alkaline any any infections can ascend the reproductive system uh so uh, in um, just uh, 
remember ab uh, about the meta squamous metaplasia how it occurs in the presence of acidic ph so in rajaswala avastha then the sutika avastha we have the alkaline ph so any infections can ascend the reproductive system in alkaline ph hence following rules and regulations like yoni dhupan processes etc prescribed in uh, our samhitas and explained by our acharyas will reduce the chances of hpv infection and further the cervical cancer the diet behavior and the classical ayurvedic medicines during these paricharyas will improve the dhatu parampara and can increase immunity so that the sthana vaigunya will not remain in the genital tract just uh, remember my uh, initial slide that is the uh, transient hpv infection and the persistent and pv infection if sthana vaigunya is there the hpv infection will be persistent and that can uh, progress up to the cervical cancers so so this uh, paricharya will decrease the chances of getting um, um, uh, cervical cancer uh, decrease the uh, rate of the in, uh, hpv infections also so if genital tract is having good immunity against all kind of infection then the hpv infection would uh, also could not sustain so it will uh, if it is happen it will go is regression immediately so dhupan chikitsa in sutika paricharya helps to eradicate all kind of infection then yoni dhavan chikitsa also alters the vaginal ph and increases the immunity against all kind of infection so arbuda in amor kosh we have the aram bundati uh, aramiti shigram that is the disease which grows very fast and causes either destruction of local tissues or body part or hinsa that means even death we can correlate the advanced uh, ca cervix of uh, to the raktaja arbuda this is incurable asadhya dallan says that it is fast growing muscular lump it involves blood uh, vessels it is associated with mausankur that is muscular sprouts or moist discharges there is continuous and excessive discharge of abnormal blood clinically also we can uh, get the uh, signs like uh, bleeds on touch during pv examination or bleeding after coitus Sympt uh, symptom in such patients most of the times the cervical cancer starts from the chronic cervical inflammatory changes hence we can correlate uh, with vrana shoth or dushta vrana ekadeshiya shoth has localized vitiated doshas collected below the skin epithelium and the mausa dhatu sushrut also elaborates the utpatti of arbuda is from the collection of mausa dhatu so we can precancer stage we can correlate with the दुष्ट वर्ण और वर्ण शोथ चरक हैज ऑल्सो इन्क्लूडेड द अर्बुद इन मांस प्रदोष व्याधी सुश्रुत एक्सप्लेन्स द योनी अर्श विच इज कैरेक्टराइज बाय द कैरेक्टराइज विथ द प्रेजेंस ऑफ मल्टीपल अम्रेला शेप मस्क्युलर स्प्लाउट स्त्रावीणा छत्राकारान करीरान जनयंती इन एनी पार्ट ऑफ फिमेल रिप्रोडक्टिव ऑर्गन हैविंग एंड दोज आर हैविंग फाउल स्मेल दुर्गंधान पिच्चिल रुधिर स्रावान ब्लड स्टेन डिस्चार्ज और म्यूकस एंड ब्लड स्टेन डिस्चार्ज और ब्लीडिंग सो इन दिस सिचुएशन द दोष इज वातपित्त प्रधान एंड कफानुबंधी रस रक्त मांस एंड शुक्र धातु आर इन्वॉल्व सो सुश्रुत हैज इन्क्लूडेड द मांस कंदी मीन्स द मस्क्युलर स्प्राउट अंडर लेख्य व्याधी we can do the lekhan chikitsa in such conditions the treatment is a local destruction by means of kshara agni and shastra shastra in modern also modern cells also we get chemical cauterization and also as we see in the colposcopy uh, slides the thermal or electrical cryo cauterization or surgical removal of conical excision or leap of the cervix so Uh, these are the shastra kshar agni with the help of these methods we can do the treatment soft spreading big wide deep rooted protuberant mrudu prasut avagad 
सॉफ्ट स्प्रेडिंग प्रसूत स्प्रेडिंग बिग वाइड डीप रूटेड गाढ़ अवगाढ़ एंड प्रोट्रूब्रेंट उच्छ्रिता आर क्यूरेबल विथ क्षार हेन्स इन इनिशियल स्टेजेस ऑफ सी एस सर्विक्स क्षार प्रतिसारण हेल्प अ लॉट कॉमेंट्रेटर इंदू ऑल्सो आई थिंक मेन्शंड क्षार कर्म ट्रीटमेंट फॉर द उपदंश प्रोबेबली दिस इरेडिकेट्स द एच पी वी इन्फेक्शन आय थिंक सो अँड आय एम युझिंग सच काइंड ऑफ उपदंशघ्न कल्प इन एच पी वी इन्फेक्शन्स देन इन स्थानिक चिकित्सा वी कॅन डू योनी धावन योनी पिचू क्षार प्रतिसारण अँड लीच ॲप्लिकेशन अपामार्ग क्षार प्रतिसारण अदर क्षार ऑल्सो कॅन बी युज बट आय एम युझिंग अपामार्ग क्षार ऑन रेग्युलर बेसिस फॉर मेनी इयर्स इट दिस इज अ मृदू क्षार अँड इट इज गिव्हिंग गुड रिझल्ट ॲज अ गर्भाशय इज मृदू मातृचा अवयव मृदू अवयव दॅन द कॅन्सर इज ऑल्सो रक्त मांसप्रधान सो आय एम युझिंग दिस मृदू क्षार then yoni dhavan chikitsa many many uh, herbal decoctions can be used for the yoni dhavan these are just guidelines you can use uh, any of these also or other you can customize according to the symptoms trifala daru haridra jeshthamat dashamul panchagal kala shweta chandana sariva any any uh, herb you can use then for yoni pichu you can use jatyadi tel varna ropak tel जात्यादी घृत ऑल्सो यू कॅन युज यष्टी मधू तेल पंचवलकल तेल लोधर तेल एनी एनी अगेन कस्टमाइज हरिद्रादी तेल यू कॅन कस्टमाइज अकॉर्डिंग टू द सिस्टम अकॉर्डिंग टू द पेशंट देन हिअर ऑल्सो हिअर ऑल्सो यू कॅन युज आय थिंक परिषेक धारा और परिषेक और धारा ऑफ जात्यादी तेल शतधौत घृत टू रिड्यूस पेन इन ऍडव्हान्स स्टेजेस यू कॅन डायरेक्टली पुट द मेडिसिन्स इन द वजाना बाय युझिंग सिरिंज इफ इट इज पॉसिबल इफ द बट आय हॅव सीन मेनी केसेस इन ताराचंद ऑफ लास्ट स्टेजेस ऑफ सर्वायकल कॅन्सर वेअर द वजाना इज टोटली ब्लॉक्ड विथ द ट्युमर इन सच सिनारिओ वी कॅन अप्लाय लीच लीच ॲप्लिकेशन इट इज यूज टू रिड्यूस द पेन इट इज आय एम युझिंग सच इन ॲडव्हान्स स्टेजेस बट अदरवाईज इफ यू गेट वजानल कनाल यू कॅन इंट्रोड्यूस द डायरेक्टली मेडिसिन्स लाईक घृत तैल इन द वजाना बाय युझिंग द सिरिंज देन यू कॅन पुट लेप ऑर लोकल ॲप्लिकेशन ऑफ शतधौत घृत ऑन लोअर ॲब्रॉमेन ऑर ऑन द वलवा ऑर द वजानल एरिया टू रिड्यूस दाह बाय केमोथेरपी अँड रेडिओथेरपी ऑल्सो यू कॅन युज दुर्वा टू रिड्यूस दाह यू कॅन युज मौक्तिक भस्म यू कॅन युज हिरक भस्म वैक्रांत भस्म देर आर मेनी मेनी कल्पाज हिअर नॉर्मली आय युज टू एलॉबरेट द मेन नैदानिक पार्ट सो इफ यू आर कन्सिस्ट परफेक्ट विथ द नैदानिक पार्ट अँड द डायग्नॉस्टिक पॉईंट ऑफ व्ह्यू देन यू कॅन युज एनी मेडिसिन्स अवर ग्रंथाज आर फुल ऑफ मेडिसिन्स यू कॅन युज एनी मेडिसिन्स ऑर द यू कॅन कस्टमाइज एनी मेडिसिन then uh, internally also you can use sariva tikta patol gokshur shatavari then the godanti bhasma pravala bhasma amruta sattva muktik bhasma vyadiharan ras which is uh, uh, used in upadansha uh, then the firanga you can use this then the pratapalankeshwar ras sutika bharan bhratva chinta mani suvarna bhasma devdar vedikwat maharashtra dikwat many many kalpas are there so uh, we can use a lot of medicines according to the stage and the symptoms of the patient and uh, these are the just few of them to have an idea so i think uh, i am done with my presentation and thank you so much nima uh, obgy central uh, for giving me this opportunity to share my views and uh, Uh, again i am thankful to the organizers and the dr priyanka madam dr premraj dr dhanashree thank you thank you so much <clears throat> thank you so much ma'am for such a informative and wonderful session and different look out at cancer through ayurveda one request is there to all the participants to please fill up the feedback form link is given in the chat box to get the certificates now 
I would like to request Dr. Dipali Rajput, ma'am, to conduct question and answer session. Dipali, ma'am, over to you. Thank you, Dr. Dhanushree. Thank you, Pragna, ma'am, for very informative and knowledgeable session. Thank you. I request participants, if you do have any questions, please raise your hand or put a message in the chat box. <laughs> we have received some questions earlier, ma'am. Yes, I yes, would yes. like to ask. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, just um, but I would like to ask. Huh. Sorry. Yes, yes. Uh, we have a question from Priya Chawla. Uh, can you share some cases of CI and which you have treated and you got best results? Yes, yes. Uh, I have uh, treated CI in, uh, to uh, cases like CI and one and uh, not CIN2, but CIN1 that is get uh, reversed with the, our treatment. I have done the Kshara Pratisaran twice, 15, 15 days sittings. Varana, then the, internally also I have given her medicines and uh, HPV, uh, I have treated uh, many patients of HPV infection with our internal medication and the Yonidhavan treatment. So, mm, we get good results with uh, for the HPV infection and the initial stages of uh, cervical cancer. Okay. Uh, and uh, I want to ask, ma'am, you have mentioned the leech therapy for advanced uh, CA uh, cervix cases. Where should we apply the leech? Correct, the correct, group? correct. We can Sorry. apply in the groin area, and also okay. you can apply uh, on the vulva. You can uh, okay. get the good results with those. Okay, and uh, already married or a sexually active woman can have the HPV vaccination? Huh, they can have, yeah, yeah. Normally, mm -hmm. uh, the, the indication of HPV vaccine, uh, uh, the vaccine is the uh, before the first intercourse. But it is uh, it is recommended that you can take if you are not HPV positive, you can take at least. And those who have taken the vaccination uh, should undergo the screening. As yes, the definitely. Yeah. Yes, yes, okay. definitely. Because uh, only 70% uh, cover is there, not the full coverage. Okay. okay. Uh, again, one thing, ma'am. Uh, are there any side effects or contraindications for HP vaccination? Uh, side effects. Or contraindications? contraindications. There are no such side effects has been seen. Uh, I'm uh, giving uh, cervical vaccine uh, for many years. No such uh, uh, side effects. But the contraindication, uh, also no contraindication. If the uh, if the patient is having a reaction to the first dose, then that will be the contraindication. Otherwise, there is no contraindication. Okay. And ma'am, uh, if any elderly patient with uh, the, she is, if she is having previous normal pap smear and now she changed her sexual partner or is having new sexual partner, mm. which uh, screening method should uh, we advise her? Mm. First, she should consult a gynecologist first, do a no, uh, detailed pelvic examination. And uh, if you are uh, finding some uh, uh, abnormal cervix or any uh, symptoms like white discharge or anything like that, then go for first pap smear, then go for colposcopy. If you, the, uh, the indication of colposcopy is the positive pap smear, no? so, or the liquid-based cytology, that is the best. So you can do go for liquid-based cytology. Nowadays, uh, they are recommending the HPV test, then which one is better? HPV or pap smear? Uh, HPV is better, but both are actually, with the pap smear, we can uh, assess the sthana vaigunya. Na? Look, okay. there is there are two factors. With pap smear or colposcopy, we get an idea about the sthana vaigunya. How the cervix is uh, bad. That, that idea we get. Okay. And HPV mm -hmm. is the only the presence of virus. Okay. Ah, if um, your no cervix not. is good, then HPV, uh, if it is good, then it will It will get regressed. Okay. If your cervix is bad and HPV is also there, then it will uh, definitely affect your cervix. Okay. Uh, 
So both are uh, uh, HPV detection is to find a, a virus, and a Pap smear mm -hmm. or colposcopy is to find the stana vaguna or the assess the cervix cervical health. Okay, we have one more question from Dr. Namita. Can mm -hmm. using condom avoid HPV infection and cervical cancer? Mm, yes, little bit. But nowadays they are um, promoting ki HPV can be just with the friction also. Huh? Uh, that not means only the uh, if groin friction and the uh, uh, thigh friction is also there, the HPV can be transmitted. Nowadays, these uh, such research papers are there. So only uh, condoms is not uh, the prevention. final uh, prevention method. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Dr. Priya want to ask ma'am that are there any instructions to be followed by patients after receiving the vaccine, Cervarix or Gardasil? Mm. As there is no, uh, this, they have to follow the regime, the, the protocol. The first is zero, then one, one, and then after six months. This is the normal uh, schedule. Jo rehta hai, wo miss nahi karna hai. And uh, otherwise, there is no rules, nothing. Okay. And one question from my end. Uh, mm. Can you elaborate the concept of Granthi and Artha uh, with respect to female, re female reproductive system? Granthi Artha. No, no, Granthi and Arbut, sorry. Granthi and Arbut, Arbut. Arbut. you have said Artha, no? so sorry, I just... <laughs> Arbut is a... Uh, if we uh, translate this, the Arbut is a tumor. It's a solid, okay? Solid thing. And the Granthi is a uh, cyst-like condition. That is the covering having the something liquid inside it. This is the basic difference. The Granthi and Arbut. Okay. Again, ma'am, can you elaborate the role of Pratap Lankeshwar and Sutti Kavaran? You earlier mentioned it that internal medicine for the mm -hmm. treatment. Correct, correct. So, uh, most of the time, uh, the patients uh, are not following the Sutika Parichariana. So, the, the the action of Sutika Bharan and the Pratap Lankeshwar is on the uh, cervical health, uh, the cervical tissues and uh, ligaments involved in it. So, most of the times... Uh, if the patient is not still Sutika and if she has not followed the Sutika Paricharya, still we can use these medicines afterwards also. Those uh, medicines can remove the Sutika dosh uh, afterwards also. So if you are using those medicines, we can uh, um, uh, uh, reverse the process of the metastasis or the... Uh, this is just the idea. This is my opinion. Not everyone has the same opinion. But uh, I am treating or giving such medicines in uh, the patients who are not following the Sutika Paricharya. So after the completion of Sutika, Parich uh, Sutika Kal also, likewise uh, after the um, 10 years, 15 years or in the menopausal age also, I am using such Kalpas and I am getting the good results. Thank you. Uh, again, one more question from Dr. Namita. Mm -hmm. What drugs are generally used for unidupan when patient is HPV positive? Hmm, good question. Yeah, uh, when a patient is HPV positive, uh, you can use nimba, nimba leaves or nimba twak powder. Churna jo rehta hai, wo you can use for that. Then you can uh, use bakuchi, then vidanga. Uh, those are having the Krumigna actions. So I'm using those uh, regularly. So we will get the good uh, results with this. Okay. Uh, nowadays, uh, uh, most of the Rotary Clubs, uh, they are organizing the cancer screening uh, correct, correct, camps. Correct. They Dance. use the VI method, Haan. visual inspection under with correct, acetic correct. acid. Correct, correct. How much uh, is it reliable? Uh, it is reliable up to certain condition. Jaise, maine jaise kaha tha ki, uh, inspection jo hume karna hai, at least we could find the uh, SCZ junction na, with this uh, VI inspection. Correct. Mm -hmm. So, uh, uh, iodine or acetic acid lagane ke baad, agar SCZ junction mein kuch abhe abnormality dikhti hai, to at least you can uh, forward such patients to 
different center for the biopsy. Na? Otherwise, to you also, uh, you can also take the biopsy. So we can segregate such patient at the time of camp. Ki in me jada kuch nahi hai. We aaye ki me isme hume samajh me aaye ki aare nahi in me isi se junction me kuch to dikhai de raha hai. So we will uh, differentiate those patients and wo jo patient alag aayenge, unka alag camp lena hai. Ki unka fir pepsmear ya fir colposcopy karke biopsy karke fir. तो सब तभी सभी आ, सही मायने में कैम का जो आ, ये है हमारा आ, आ, एम है वो सक्सेसफुल होगा अदरवाइज सब पेशेंट सिर्फ व्याय करके क्या करेंगे सिर्फ देखा और चले गए कुछ नहीं होगा सो आफ्टर आइडेंटिफिकेशन ऑफ द ट्रांसफॉर्मेशन जोन एंड दैट एबनॉर्मल एसीज है वो डिफ्रेंशिएट करके उनको आगे लेके जाना है हमें तो और तो मतलब हमारे क्लिनिक में तो हमने वीआई के लिए नहीं जाना चाहिए ना वीआई शुड आइदर गो फॉर एचपीवी और पैप्स में आ रही है नहीं वीआई तो हम रेगुलर ओपीडी प्रोसेस के लिए कर सकते हैं ना जैसे पेशेंट आती है हमारे पास कुछ है करके जनरल पीवी एग्जामिनेशन कर लो वीआई कर लो उसमें अगर पता चलता है की कुछ प्रॉब्लम है देन पेशेंट को आपको नेक्स्ट सेशन में बुलाना है फिर यू कैन डू दैट हाँ तो जैसे मेरे पास अभी पेशेंट आई मैंने देखा और उसको मैं वो बोलूंगी कि भाई दो दिन के बाद या जैसे भी टाइम हो कल आ जाना हम आगे का टेस्ट करेंगे इट इज अ गुड क्वेश्चन अगेन वॉट इज द शेड्यूल इज when the when the you are having the positive pap smear then you have to do the screening regularly one at least yearly okay that depends upon the what results you are getting from the screening when the patient is normal for uh, normal screening for successive three pap smears then you can uh, ask her to come after 5 years 5 years ke baad bhi normally hai to up to i think at at the uh, up to 65 to 70 age tak bulana chahiye uske baad zarurat nahi but you can reduce the visits if the uh, smear or the result is normal and if it is not abnormal then you have to ask her to visit you regularly after one year or six months depending upon the stages dr reema wanted to ask something hmm dr reema Uh, hello ma'am if the huh. patient is having a dominant acetovite like persistent acetovite lesion uh, constantly for year and a, more than a year and if she has tested negative for uh, pap smear biopsy and other tests even the hpv uh, uh, this dna essay then hmm. what should be our protocol followed and if she has taken she is married and but no children yet and hmm. uh, what should be done then दिस इज जैसे मैंने अभी देखा अभी स्क्वेवर्स मेटाप्लेजिया इज अलिंग प्रोसेस करेक्ट दिस इज नॉट द मेटाप्लेजिया इज नॉट अ कैंसर थिंग दैट्स दिस इन डिटेल करेक्ट डिस्प्लेजिया इज द प्री कैंसर कंडीशन मेटाप्लेजिया इज अलिंग प्रोसेस सो इट इज ओके ना कोई प्रॉब्लम नहीं है so ma'am acetovite lesion uh, means nothing if she is testing negative for all the uh... hmm, correct this is the healing hua hai na abhi healing process har ek ki alag alag hogi na जैसे कोई भी अभी हम इंसिजन लेते हैं तो किसी का किलोइड फॉर्मेशन हो जाता है किसी का एकदम स्किन पूरा नॉर्मल हो जाता है तो ये क्यों होता है दैट डिपेंड्स अपॉन द हीलिंग कैपेसिटी ऑफ दैट पेशेंट ओके दैट इज अगेन कम टू द सारत्व अगेन इफ यू थिंक अप फ्रॉम द आयुर्वेदिक पॉइंट ऑफ व्यू तो अगर उसमें बाकी कोई साइंस एंड सिम्टम्स नहीं है एच पी है एंड द रिपोर्ट आर ऑल्सो नॉर्मल देन इट्स जस्ट द हीलिंग द फाइब्रोसिस हो गया है उसका बाकी कुछ नहीं है leave it okay ma'am thank you uh, ma'am one more question hmm up to what stage we can use the kshar chikitsa to what stage of cin uh, i think cin 1 because jaise maine kaha tha cin 1 isliye maine stages bhi detail liye the aapke to cin 1 mein maine jaise kaha tha ki only one third of the epithelium is involved so it is just 1 uh, uh, mm so our kshar has capacity to penetrate up to 1 or 2 mm so cin 1 tak to uh, kar sakte hi hai cin 2 mein thoda jyada karna padega settings mere khayal mein 
लेकिन आफ्टर दैट नो अपू सी आई एंड टू वी कैन ट्राई ओके मैम थैंक यू Uh, one more question from Dr. Namita. Uh, can Vasti will be helpful while treating CS habits? Vasti. Yes, ma'am. Uh, Vasti का ज़्यादा role नहीं दिखाई देता CS habits में. Uh, if it is uh, in advanced stages, if it is uh, spread up to the rectum, तो है. लेकिन वात वैधी करके अगर इसका हम देखते हैं, तो it is not like that. तो बस्ती आई डोंट थिंक कि बस्ती का कुछ ज्यादा रोल रहेगा बट टू हैव द प्रॉपर वात की गति वगैरह उसके लिए अगर उसकी संप्राप्ति में कुछ अगर है फैक्टर्स वैसे अपान दुष्टि के तो इसका रोल रहेगा लेकिन ऐसे प्रोटोकॉल में सबको बस्ती देना है करके नहीं होगा There are some questions, uh, Dr. Dipali. Role of Agni Karma, breast cancer, cervical cancer. Please elaborate. Uh, yeah. I am. Uh, what? Uh, there are some. One uh, minute. The role of Agni Karma. Uh, <laughs> normal. Abhi modern science wale to karte hi hai. Laser to use karte hai wo. हमें भी जैसे अगर लेजर के बजाय हमारा अग्निकर्म करे तो हो सकता है तो सुवर्णशाला का हमें यूज करनी पड़ेगी स्मॉल पॉइंटेड बिकॉज मृदु है सुवर्ण हैज द एंटी कैंसरस रोल तो कर सकते करके देखना पड़ेगा मैंने कभी किया नहीं है एज इट इज अ रक्त जो एंड सुकुमार ना तो अग्निकर्म का यूज नहीं किया है मैंने अभी तक कभी लेकिन अगर कर, करूंगी तो इसका करना पड़ेगा सुवर्णशला का, का. एंड द ब्रेस्ट कैंसर एंड सर्वाइकल कैंसर का रिलेशन कोई नहीं है ब्रेस्ट कैंसर एंड द एंडोमेट्रियल कैंसर एंड ओवेरियन कैंसर आर को रिलेटेड सर्वाइकल कैंसर इज टोटली डिफरेंट उसका रिलेशन है ही नहीं मतलब दोनों एक साथ हो सकते दैट इज डिफरेंट लेकिन सर्वाइकल कैंसर हुआ इसलिए ब्रेस्ट कैंसर हुआ ऐसे नहीं होता है क्योंकि सर्वाइकल कैंसर का पैथोलॉजी जो है वो एचपीवे से आगंतु जो हेतु से प्रभावित है और ब्रेस्ट कैंसर एंड एंडोमेंट्रल ऑल दीज आर हार्मोनल एंड अदर फैक्टर्स आर देयर आई बरी है सात नंतर येतात ना तर सात ला जाऊ म्हणजे माझं नेबुलायझेशन नाही घेते तिथे त्यांना दाखवते मला वाटत येता येता एक्सरे पण काढू हॅलो 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 हा मॅम डॉक्टर मनीषा हिअर ओके प्रोसिड मॅम विथ युअर क्वेश्चन येस आय हॅव अन्सर केसेस वी कॅन डू डायरेक्टली बायोपसी इन स्पाइट ऑफ डुईंग कॅप्समिअर ऑर कोलपोस्कोपी Ma'am, you are not audible. Ma'am, we can't hear you. So sorry. So sorry. So sorry. Um, you can. I would recommend that you uh, you should go for biopsy under colposcopic guidance because under colposcopy we have the magnifying uh, image of the cervix, na. So we will uh, get the proper SCG junction, the transformation zone, and the proper biopsy uh, we can take, and we can get the proper result. Okay. Okay. Next question. Is anyone having questions? You can raise your hands or message in chat box. I think no more questions, ma'am. 
Okay. Thank you, Pradna ma'am. Now Thank I would so like much. to request Dr. Donashri for yeah. vote of thanks. Dr. Dhanashri. Okay, you proceed, ma'am. Okay. Dr. Dipali, proceed with. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Dr. Dipali, it was very good and informative lecture, ma'am. You covered Thank all you. the aspects from the basic and advanced uh, treatment and management protocol. Also, I would like to uh, thank you very much from the NEMA OBGY Society. Thank you very Thank much you, once again, ma'am. Thank you, everyone. Thank you so much, and ma'am. It was really a wonderful session, I should say. And uh, uh, we would like to see you in the next uh, part of uh, our seminar or in our webinars also. So uh, today's session was uh, really very nice. Thank, Thank you, you so much. much for giving us time uh, from your busy schedule. Thank you so much, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you. And on behalf of Nima Obijoya Society Central and Maharashtra, Body, I would like to express my gratitude to the uh, president of NEMA Central, Dr. Vinayak Timburnikar, sir, Dr. Ashutosh Kulkarni, sir, and Dr. U.S. Pandey, sir, for their remarkable support. I extend my gratitude to our NEMA OBJY uh, Central President, Dr. Kamini Diman, Secretary, Dr. Priyanka Nakadimam, Treasurer, Dr. Vishnu Bhavani, sir, for supporting and guiding us to conduct today's webinar. I would like to thank and extend my gratitude to our eminent speaker, Dr. Pratne Aftikar, ma'am, for giving her valuable time for us. Can I leave now? Yeah, thank you so thank much, ma'am. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you so much. much. Yes. I would further extend my gratitude to all my participants uh, in the NIMA uh, OBGY Maharashtra, Dr. Suhas Herlikar, sir, Dr. Manoj Gaikwad, sir, and treasurer, Dr. Ajay Raj Bas, sir, for their support. I would like to thank Dr. Daga sir and Dr. Archana for the technical help. I would like to thank all the participants. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Thank you, Dipali, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Good ma'am. Thank you. Okay, I declare the session is over now. This चला जाऊँ तब भी यार पॉइंट मारेगी ना